My name is Chris Wilmot. I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Leicester. And in this short film, I want to talk about some of the innovations that we've been doing in teaching in the area of, of bioethics. Uh, particularly, I want to talk about some of the rationale for an exercise that we've been running with second year medical biochemistry students, in which we asked them to produce a short film on the science and ethics of recent developments in biomedicine. There are several reasons why we've included a, a component on bioethics in this module and particularly in this activity. One of the key things is that in 2002 and again in 2007 the Quality Assurance Agency benchmark statements included the importance of all students studying any biological subject uh, that they should know about the, both the ethical and the social consequences of developments in their field. And also similar developments in secondary school education, particularly around the whole notion of how science works, have really brought bioethics education to a much more prominent role in, in all curriculum development. So uh, since 2008, we've been asking the students to produce uh, a five minute video on the science and ethics related to a particular development taking place in biomedicine. I set the topics, I assign them to teams, and they are in teams of, of four or five for the particular task that we're, we're asking them to do. The topics have evolved over the course of the, the five or six years. We, we don't set exactly the same topics each year. That's partly a reflection of the fact that bioethics is clearly talking about innovations in biomedicine and so the sorts of things that crop up year on year are perhaps different to what we would have thought about, uh, thought about setting in, in a previous uh, version of the course. The other preparations that I need to do are in terms of uh, a couple of sessions I do with them as plenary sessions. So one of those sessions is thinking about the practicalities of filmmaking. So what I've tended to do there is to take some examples of other people's videos from YouTube and examples of previous student videos that have been produced as part of this course and to show some of those and to get the students to think through what are the good features and what are the less good features of each of those films. What that enables them then is, enables them then is to think through what then they would include in their own films. It exposes them to some different styles of film, things that maybe would or wouldn't work. I hope it encourages some of them to move away some, from obvious things like Vox Pop, which don't necessarily add very much to the content of, of their discussions. The second plenary session that I run with the students is to introduce them to some of the background ethical thinking that they're need, going to need to know in order to carry out the activity effectively. So it would be perfectly understandable if these students who after all have come to university to study a, a biosciences course, if I came in to them and said, well, the great pillars of uh, philosophical thinking, Immanuel Kant, John Stuart Mill, Jeremy Bentham, they said this or that, for these students to kind of not really feel engaged with that. And to be perfectly honest with you, I, I learned that the hard way because I did try that one year. I saw their heads dropping and I thought, no, that's, that's not going to work. So in subsequent years, what I've done is to actually introduce those uh, areas of thinking by asking the students to, to engage with a case study. It's to do with issues of fertility, and it involves uh, a fictional couple uh, and what, what they should do faced with the particular dilemmas that they have. I ask the students to think this through. They uh, suggest some of the answers to me, which I then uh, note to the, to the whiteboard, and then what I'm able to do then is to say to the students, OK, well, some of you said these sorts of arguments here. You didn't know it, but actually what you're doing is rehearsing the sorts of arguments put forward by this chap, Immanuel Kant, uh, who um, said we should work from first principles or duties. And then some of the others of you, you gave these arguments here, and those are examples of the sorts of things which are based on consequences or outcomes, and that's what Mill and Bentham were suggesting were the ways that we should make our ethical choices. They then have a six week period in which to, to go away and, and make their film. So that will include having to do uh, research for the film. It will involve deciding what style of film they want to make, because they could choose very different styles of films if, if they wish to do so. They also need to then uh, shoot the film and edit it together. And we all end up with uh, one final morning where we see all the films uh, shown together in some grand finale. And then in terms of the assessment of the activity, we then have 70% uh, of the marks are still for the content for have they got uh, sufficient and appropriate coverage of the science and the ethics, and the other 30% are for production quality, so uh, about the style of the film that they've made, their creativity, 
and the overall quality, sound quality, visual quality, those sorts of things. Over the years I've been very impressed by the variety of different films that the students produce. So some of them have gone for uh, interviews, some of them have gone for new studio type presentations, but they've increasingly used a variety of different techniques as well, uh, different tricks in order to make a very engaging film. In 2012, for example, one of the student groups produced a film on gene therapy, exploiting the availability of newly emerging software, uh, Prezi, which enables them to, uh, to swoop and swirl through some of the key points on the whole issue of gene therapy. A couple of years ago, one of the student teams uh, used finger puppets as a way of actually introducing some quite complex issues in the whole realm of public health ethics. The film was very successful, not only by my criteria, but actually it also went on to be the inaugural winner of the Nuffield Box Office Bioethics competition. John James on our Twitter feed has said, what about people's right to choose? How dare the government force us to put foreign chemicals into our bodies? It is important here to consider that the majority of vaccines are given in the early stages of life. And again, to use the MMR scandal as an example, parents are refusing to accept the vaccine for their child due to their belief in an entirely fictional link with autism. I would argue it is ethically wrong to allow a generation of children to suffer as a result of this. Of all the student films, uh, a film from 2010 on DNA forensics is still my favourite of all the different student-generated productions over the course of the last five years. It's my favourite for a number of reasons. I think it really captures a number of different dimensions and brings them together very nicely. They have a, a fantastic opening sequence where there's a crime scene investigation and so they talk us through that where they've got a cast of thousands of their friends who seem to become involved in, in helping with the video. But they also combine that later on with an interview with Sir Alec Jeffries uh, in which he speaks very eloquently about the, the history and the scientific basis of genetic fingerprinting. And then the two main characters stay in role. So there's the detective and there's the principal scientific investigator. And by having a discussion between the two of them, they're able to, to discuss the, the pros and the cons of the National DNA Database, which is a controversial uh, tool being set up using this technology. A cold-blooded murder occurred last night. It was of the young resident. We, the suspected murder is about to come out right now. Oh, here he comes. Get him away, get him away. I'm innocent. She fell on a knife, I swear. So, uh, what do we have here? Homicide, 19 year old female, neck wound. I think it was a knife. The original technology that we developed 25 years ago made use of bits of DNA that we call mini-satellites. Uh, these consist of a short sequence, typically about 30 bases long in the DNA, which is repeated over and over again to give you chunks of DNA, uh, thousands of bases long, that can vary in the number of repeats or stutters, very considerably from person to person. I'm pretty sure you've got the right guy. His DNA was already on the database for theft. Yeah, but theft isn't murder. Not only that, but theft is such a small crime. There's loads of evidence that already points towards him. We've even got his hair sample from the crime scene. Yeah, but that's circumstantial. There's been previous cases where DNA has been planted in the past. This project's part of my broader commitment to bioethics education. So even at Leicester, for example, I am doing some other work with different students thinking about bioethics. The video production activity that I've been describing is carried out with a group of 25 to 45 students per year. There's another course of, there's another uh, set of bioscience students who I teach uh, where there's 150 or so of them. So really it wouldn't be feasible to, to set them the task of producing a, a video. I am still very keen, however, that they are carried out, carrying out an activity that is showing them the relevance of their subject area to things that they might be seeing in the broader news about biosciences. So what I ask those students to do 
is actually to write a, a reflective commentary on a new story from the previous calendar, di calendar year. So they need to choose a story that's available on the BBC News website and to talk through the background of the story but also then to unpack it and think about what are the ethical arguments for and against the particular development that was being described. I now call that task headline bioethics and again as with the video some of the best examples of the commentaries that the students produce are being made available to a broader audience because uh, I really feel that some of these genuine resources that they're producing are of real value to the wider world and not simply as an assessed activity that goes in a filing cabinet and never gets seen again. To my mind, video production brings a number of benefits for the students. It allows them to express their creativity, it allows them to work in teams, and these are things which uh, boost their engagement with the whole task. They're producing uh, a genuine product at the end of the day, so it's an authentic task, and we're able to share that with the wider world as well. So all of those things together boost the value of video production. It's interesting that as, as part of preparation for this, I've been contacting previous students and asking them for permission to use clips from their films. And one of the things that's come through spontaneously from them was, first of all, how much they've enjoyed this whole production process. But secondly, they, several of them used the word different. And what they liked about the task was that it was different from essay writing or report writing. And as a result of which, uh, I think they really found the whole process very valuable. So I would recommend to colleagues in different institutions, colleagues in different subjects, that you think about getting students to produce films as an assessed activity, as it really has very many benefits going for it.